Glass against plastic? Easy comparison. Metal against plastic? Easy again. Premium materials have a huge effect on a smartphone's day-to-day -day look and feel. But what happens when you're called on to compare glass against metal? And more broadly, products specifically engineered to catch your eye with their designs and catch your ear with their front-facing speakers. Well, things get tough. And tough tasks take a ton of time, so let's get to talking. I'm Michael Fisher, this is Pocket Now, and this is Sony Xperia Z2 versus HTC One M8. Right up front, we would not have an Xperia Z2 were it not for the good folks at GSM Nation, one of the first US retailers to stock this device. If you want one of your own, click the link to GSM Nation in the description below and tell them Pocket Now sent you. Now, assumptions are dangerous things, but we'll go out on a limb and say that if you're a fan of one of these brands, it probably has something to do with their precision hardware. These are both gorgeous devices made of premium materials, brushed aluminum in the case of our HTC One M8, and shatter-resistant glass with a metallic frame on the Xperia Z2. That means they're not as adventure-proof as their polycarbonate competition. In, from a durability standpoint, they're both rather susceptible to scratching from even minor incidents, but they sure are pleasing to the eye. Neither is particularly easy to hold. The One M8 is rounded, but slippery, while the Xperia is squared off and slippery. Their mass is about equal, but the Sony product is over a millimeter thinner, and while its sheer-sided construction isn't as soothing to the palm as the M8's gentle curve, that does mean the Xperia doesn't wiggle on a tabletop when tapped. And by the way, you can double tap to unlock it in a stationary state. The One M8 needs to be jostled or picked up first before that gesture works. Waking them up brings those big 1080p screens to life. Sony's triluminous LCD is slightly larger than HTC's SLCD3, and there's a very slight dip in pixel density as a result, but nothing you'd notice. While Sony's come a long way in screen technology, it's still beat just slightly by HTC here. The M8's whites are cleaner, its backlight is brighter, and its side visibility is better. If those differences are tough to see, looking under the hood gets even more hazy, at least at first. Qualcomm's Snapdragon 801 provides the power for each of these devices, with microSD expansion to 128 gigs if you're a media pack rat, and each phone's got a sealed-in battery as well. Look a little deeper and the variations start to show. Sony's battery is significantly larger, and the Xperia also packs 50% more RAM, while in onboard storage, HTC offers a 32 gig option while Sony is stuck at 16. And while the One M8 has been shown to survive an underwater trip or two, the Xperia Z2 is actually rated for it, as well as for dust exposure. So if you're the type who likes to swim with your phone or walk around with pockets full of sawdust, the Z2 is your better option. Let's talk software for a second. Android 4.4.2 underpins each of these, but it's pretty far down, buried underneath Sense 6 on the One M8 and Sony's custom UI on the Xperia. In some ways, these skins are quite similar. Each is predominantly dark and minimalistic in tone. Each offers a distilled social feed and an array of manufacturer-specific features. For HTC, these tend to be enhancements to stock features like the gallery, while Sony tends to go the route of lots of pre-installed apps. Sony's approach is definitely the less subtle of the two, and offerings like small apps and the What's New hub are far too visible for the amount of functionality they return. Sony's skin also feels dated in places, like the unnecessary badges on home screen folders and the oddly clunky settings panel in the notification shade. Changing screen brightness, for example, takes twice as many taps on the Xperia as it does on the One M8. On the flip side, the Xperia offers more customizability. Drill down into the settings menu and you'll find a wealth of options to fine tune almost every part of the experience. Also, the media suite is very polished from the Walkman music player, to the pictures album, to the movies hub and beyond. And it all looks quite nice. Plus, you're not subjected to the bizarre pseudo pastels of HTC's Sense palette. We like what each of these companies has done to try to simplify the shooting experience in the camera app, but it's Sony that goes the extra mile here. HTC's volume key shortcut to launch the camera is a clever idea, but it's inconsistent. Sony's simpler, dedicated key is far more reliable, and it allows for half-press to focus as well. 
Sony's also kept a feature pioneered by HTC, the persistent camcorder button. As you might expect, that superiority carries through to the photos produced. Some of Sony's victory is predictable. A 20 megapixel camera going up against a 4 megapixel shooter, well, you've got all the obvious benefits of added sharpness and zoom ability. But that being said, keeping them to the same size as we've done here, most folks would be fine with either camera's photos. As we said in our 1M8 review, yes, the camera is low on resolution, but it's far from the worst camera on the market. The surprise comes in low light shots, a category HTC has done very well in since the M7 launch, while the Xperia does it better. It's typically able to pull much more light from a scene with its superior auto mode, which adjusts automatically. You don't have to toggle a night shooting mode as you do on the 1M8. And the results here, well, speak for themselves. And how about the duo camera, that added sensor that gives the 1M8 its fancy U-focus feature? Well, the Xperia Z2 is able to use multiple shots to achieve basically the same effect, without that weird second eyeball. Factor in the added dynamic range of Sony's camera, the superior HDR results, the better stabilization, and the easier to grasp viewfinder, along with 4K recording and video, and it's basically a runaway win for the Xperia in the camera department. It's not every day you get two smartphones with front-firing speakers in the house. In every significant sense, this has been HTC's playground for over a year. The company's oversized grills and headline-grabbing brand name have served it well. But with the Z2, Sony's competing by going to the other extreme, with probably the most unobtrusive speakers ever. Seriously, you have to squint to see them. This is a good implementation, considered by itself in a quiet room. But against the 1M8, there's no contest. HTC is the hands-down winner. Yes, even when using Sony's software enhancements like Clear Audio Plus, XLoud, and even manually boosting the bass. And it's not necessarily amplitude we're talking about here. We only see a decibel or two difference in peak levels. It's the fullness, the richness of the sound. There's almost no bass to the Xperia's output, so it's tinnier and more shallow than the throaty tones of the 1M8. We tested it in YouTube. In Netflix. and in local audio. There's a bass line here that's totally lost on the Xperia, but obvious on the 1M8. And all that goes for speakerphone calls as well, which are much louder and just better on the 1M8. But on regular voice calls over AT&T's network, Callers said they either couldn't tell a difference in audio quality between these two, or that they preferred the Sony device, which they said made us sound cleaner, and which also better muffled background noise. And once you break out Sony's fancy noise-canceling earbuds, which came in the box with our unit here, well, the effect of the noise cancellation is stunning. It's almost like magic, wiping out everything from a loud subway car to a loud subway musician. It's amazing that Sony packs these in the box for no charge. And combined with the robust customizations available in the software, it makes listening to music on the Z2 substantially more enjoyable than on the HTC One, even if you spring for the fancy Harman Kardon edition of the latter. The Walkman brand continues to do Sony proud. After only a few days testing, we don't have all the data we need for some points in this comparison, like battery life and hardcore performance testing. Hold out for our full review of the Xperia Z2 for more on all that. As always at Pocket Now, picking an overall winner in this contest is beside the point. And if you think that's a cop-out, well, you're in the wrong place. 
because the HTC One M8 is one of our best reviewed devices ever. And spoiler alert, the Xperia Z2 is destined not to fall far behind. Finally, true excellence is showing its face in the Android world, and these handsets are but two sides of that excellence. So if you want the best camera experience you can find on Android, you're a fan of listening to your media in private, and the only time you drop your phone is in the swimming pool, get the Xperia Z2. If, on the other hand, you frequently share media or don't like headphones, and you favor a modern, fun, useful interface and a more polished feel overall, go for the One M8. Stick to those guidelines and we've got a feeling you're going to be quite happy either way. Once again, our special thanks to GSM Nation, selling the Xperia Z2 Unlocked right now at gsmnation.com. Stay tuned for our full Z2 review at pocketnow.com, and check out our Xperia Z2 versus Galaxy S5 comparison available right here on YouTube. Until next time, this has been Michael Fisher with Pocket Now. Thank you for watching. Tough times take a ton of a ton of time, and tough oh, and tough things, and tough times and tough tasks. And tough times take a ton of time, so talk a t text. And tough times take a ton of talking. Tough. Toot. Tiddlywinks.